When it comes to your puppy training goals and expectations for that first month, there's five different areas that we want you to think about. The first one could be possibly the most important, and that is being a really good leader for your puppy. I'm gonna show you a couple exercises that I do with Euchre every single day that just sort of helps implement me as being in charge, but it's a really non-confrontational way just for her to figure that out. Now, I know she's gonna to wanna to come out and play with this Frisbee, so we're gonna work a little bit on coming out of the crate a little bit more calmly for me to put her house line on. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the door, but I'm only gonna open it an inch or so, and I'm gonna just see if she's gonna come out or not, and I don't want her to come out. Oh, good girl, unless, oops, unless I give her permission. So if she decides to barge, yes, you. If she decides to barge out of the crate, I'm simply gonna shut the door. There's no discipline, there's no yelling, there's no screaming. She decides her own fate. Yes, good girl. And I'm gonna reach in, put her leash on. Good girl, she still needs to wait for permission. What a good girl. Okay, yay! So good! And all of that self-control leads to coming out and having a little game with a little Frisbee. I am always play with her with the Frisbee when she comes out. Sometimes I just pet her. Sometimes I'll let her come out, ask her to sit first, and then we can move forward. You can switch it up a little bit, but that's a great way just to teach them from the get-go that you're in charge, but it doesn't need to be this big thing. It can be nice and easy, and this is super easy to practice multiple times a day because of the amount of times that your puppy is in and out of their crate in one day. Another leadership exercise that we work on with her are some skills or some self-control around the door. Now, we don't have a lot of people coming to our door right now, but we do want to condition her that if somebody does come in, we don't want her just to run through and jump on them. The second thing we want her to understand is if, if the door is ever open, we don't want her to run out and be in an unsafe situation. So I'm going to show you what we've been working on with her. Hey, baby cakes, come here for a second. So I'm going to encourage her just to lie down here at the top step. I'm going to reward her and I'm teaching her to remain in this position as I put my shoes on so she can just show a little bit of self-control. Good girl, wait. As she holds position, I'm going to return often and reward her initially while she's learning this. Good, wait. Yes. Excellent, what a good girl. I wanna make ma uh, maintaining position here more valuable than getting up. No, she just made a mistake, so I'm just gonna help her out. I'm just gonna lure her back down for now, but I'm not gonna reward her. I'm gonna reward her only if she holds the down. Yes, like that. Wait, now I'm gonna try the next step, which is a bit more challenging. I'm gonna open the door. Yes, babe, you're so smart, good girl. Again, bringing value to maintaining position. And then the last test, which is the most challenging, is getting her to stop in front of the door. Okay, Yuke, sit. Yes, good girly. And we're teaching her that you're not allowed to go outside until we give you permission. So I'm gonna get the line in my hand first, and then out we go. Okay, let's go play. Good girl, woohoo! Now that you know how to be a good leader for your puppy, we need to talk about the next four points. I'm Kale McCann, this is Euchre. Welcome back to McCann Dogs. Let's start first with talking about puppy potty training. Now at this point, after a month of your puppy being home, you should be at the point where your puppy is no longer having accidents in your house. And they also should be well on their way to asking you when they have to go outside as well. Now we've had pretty good success with Euchre in this department. She has had a few accidents along the way, but uh, both times that she had her accidents, it was because I wasn't quick enough to let her outside. And um, one of the things that we've been really focusing on with her is understanding her daily potty schedule schedule so that we can anticipate when she might have to go out. Um, there's also been a few times where we have purposely not let her out to kind of put her in a situation where she had to indicate to go outside and her response was to go to the door, get a little bit disconnected. It gave us an opportunity to say, do you have to go outside and then go through the process of taking her. Once we showed her that a few times, she was able to indicate on her own to us when she needed to go out. But knowing your puppy's schedule and having a better idea of, you know, when they normally have to go throughout the day. And with that, also making sure that you're being really good at supervising them is really gonna allow you to have success with this. We actually have a video specifically on how to teach your puppy how to let you know that they have to go outside. You can find that in the description below. 
We are having a lot of success so far with her even just after one month of having her home, but that doesn't mean that we trust her completely. When we're not able to supervise her, we're still gonna use all the tools that we have to ensure that she's not sliding backwards in her progress. Things like utilizing the crate when we can't pay attention, or we have baby gates that we put out so that she can't sneak into the other room and have an accident. She's also always on her house line to ensure that we can get control and get her outside when we need to. So it's really important that even when things start to go successfully, that you don't just let your guard down and get too relaxed too quickly because it's very easy for puppies to slide backwards in their progress. So make sure you're maintaining good criteria, you keep that supervision up, and then you're still really working towards teaching them to ask you to go outside. Now in terms of the crate, it's something that she's learned to be comfortable in right from the beginning because it's something that we use right from the first day that she's come home. Now a couple of the things, okay, a couple of the things that we've done to encourage her to be comfortable in her crate is keep it in a place that's really central in her home. So she never feels segregated. She always sort of sees us walking around. We've also used it a lot throughout the day. You know, we try to spend as much time training with her and spending, you know, um, time out of the crate as we can, but we both live really busy lives. So she has to get used to spending time time in her crate for a long period. So it's important that from the beginning, we don't make that a big deal. We just put her in after she's had ample exercise, after she's had a lot of training, and then just let her learn to just chill out and be calm. Sometimes she can be a wild woman in there and she'll play with her toys and entertain herself, which is fine, but she knows that it's her place to kind of go and chill out. And it's something that we're gonna utilize for months and months and months. Now in the first couple days of having her home in terms of her crate training, we did let her out when she would make some noise in her crate. We were still trying to work out her potty schedule and figure out what exactly she wanted. But as time went on and we got a better sense of her schedule, um, we did have to work through a little bit of barking. She did go through a bit of a defiant uh, stage where if she just wanted to be out playing or if she would see one of us leave the house, she would want to bark. And we would just work through that individually until she understood that you know when you go in your crate, you just need to learn to chill out. One of the things that can be helpful though is making sure that before we would put her into the crate for an extended period of time, she was tired. She'd had lots of exercise, she'd had some training, and um, sometimes she'd go in, she'd fuss for a couple minutes because she didn't want the fun to, to end, and then she would finally realize that she was tired, and then she'd be out for a nap, giving us a few more hours to get some work done. And the second question we get asked a lot is how much time should my puppy be spending in their crate? And we really want you to think about, you know, quality time together over quantity. She spends far more time in her crate than she does spend out of her crate, unfortunately. But one of the reasons why that happens is that she doesn't have all of her training done yet. She can't be trusted, you know, being loose in my house. She still wants to chew on things. Um, she still wants to jump up on the counter sometimes. She's a puppy and she's gonna make poor choices. So I look at it this way, when she's out of her crate I make sure that she has quality attention from me we're training you know she's playing around in the kitchen I'm paying attention to her I'm making sure she's getting lots of exercise throughout the day so that when it is time to go in her crate I don't feel guilty about putting her in there and as her training starts to come along and she can learn things like go and lie down on your bed or you know hi or you know not to jump up or she starts to make better choices around the house her crate time will slowly become less and less and less, but you don't wanna be giving that freedom to your puppy too early before their training is done. So just make sure that the time that they're out of their crate, you're giving quality attention, you're really doing as much as you can so that when they're in the crate, you don't feel so bad. Now, where should your expectations be in terms of training at that one month mark? Now, when we're doing our training, especially in the first month and the initial training of all of the, the exercises that we do, we build on motivation. We motivate the dog to do things. So they learn to do things you know, fun and, and properly when they're doing things from the beginning. But I will tell you something that we've struggled with this puppy is that she's not super motivated. Here, pup to work for food. And this is something that has been a major challenge. Um, so we've had to be pretty strategic with uh, with our food rewards. We've had to take uh, and learn certain times of the day that she's been you know, a little bit more eager to work for food. And they haven't always been uh, times that I would have anticipated. Um, and then we've also had to try a whole bunch of different types of food. In the past, I've been able to feed um, you know, just kibble at home with my puppies to get them to work. But for her, she's not interested in kibble. She will eat it for her breakfast, but after that, she's just not interested. Now, one of the things that we've really learned uh, with this puppy is that she loves to play with toys. So I've utilized a toy as a reward for a lot of our training. So I'll show you a couple of things that I've been doing with our toy. Oh, I have a little Frisbee here. So once I've trained her to sit, I can actually use it as the reward. Sit. Yes, get it, good girl. So if she sits, that means the game is gonna start once again. Good girl, sit. 
Yes, okay, get it. Yay, good girl. Now, what I've had a lot of fun with, with this puppy being a Border Collie, she's super energetic. I've also started to use it to teach her a little of impulse control. So now, sit. Good, oh, that was a good one. Sit, sit. Good girl, good, sit. Okay, yay, good girl. So I teach her, even though I'm waving that Frisbee around in front of you, you have to maintain good um, um, control. Good girl, out. Yes, excellent. So you can see the engagement and the intensity I'm getting through listening because I'm using something that, oops, that she, yes, that's a good girl, that she truly wants. So you have to figure out what makes your dog tick. Now I can't, oh, that's very nice, good girl. I can't use a, a toy for every single thing that I wanna teach, but I can at least start working on the process of her learning to listen and stay focused, especially around distractions. Now, what should you expect from your puppy within that first month of having them home? Well, I would recommend that you start on all of the basics, you know, things like teaching them to sit and down, and maybe at the one month point, you could work towards having them hold that position for a longer period of time until being released, like you saw Euchre do. I would also be working a lot on teaching them how to respond to their name around distractions. You don't necessarily need to put them in a distracting environment, but create distractions around you. You know, sometimes when I'm practicing, I'll grab some of her toys off of the uh, crate, and I'll spread them around the floor and I'll work with more distractions around, even though I'm not changing the location, I'm making the environment around her a little bit more challenging. You might work on some calming exercises like teaching them a weight or an on your bed exercise so that you can utilize that when they're out of their crate instead of you know having to put them away all the time. Um, things that are going to allow you to control the puppy a little bit more easily is where your focus should be. And then don't forget about the fun stuff as well. You know, something that we work every single day would be you know, stationary exercises like sit, down, uh, weight on your bed. Um, we work on motion exercises like teaching her her recall to come to me, to come close so that I can gain control. We work weekly, sometimes daily on our handling exercises so that I can more easily clip her toenails. Um, and then last but not least, the fun stuff is tricks. You know, we try to work on tricks, you know, a little bit every day if we can. It helps keep her both mentally and physically stimulated, which means more resting for me in between our training sessions. It also teaches teaches her that listening and learning um, with me and, and doing things for me is a lot of fun, it's motivating. And the more I can teach her about that, the easier it is gonna be to teach her more serious things like how to walk on a loose leash and, you know, when we're out in the public. So make sure that you're taking little time every day to work on lots of different aspects of your training because it makes a big difference when it all comes together at the end. Next, let's talk a little bit about chewing, nipping, and biting. Now, I will tell you that of a lot of the puppies that I've had in the past, this puppy loves to chew. And it's been something that we've really had to have close supervision on. She's chewing her house line right now. Um, we've had to make sure that we're really paying close attention to her because she loves to put things in her mouth. So it's very important that she has access to toys at all times and toys that are going to be safe for her to chew. If she was to have things like stuffed animals, or rope toys, she would have those ripped apart in about two seconds flat, the, the squeakies would be out. So when we're giving her toys to play with, she does have toys, access to toys all the time, but she'll have things like chew bones or things like Kong with cheese inside or um, anything that if she was to lie down and chew on it, she wouldn't be able to rip apart or wreck. And um, this is really important because it's allowed us to redirect her to those items instead of the things that she's curious about chewing, things like Amazon boxes or the toilet paper roll or the tea towel hanging from the, uh, from the stove. These are all things that she's really investigated in just like any other puppy. Uh, but having a house line on has been instrumental in our ability to redirect her and teach her that those choices are just not on the table. And then of course, if we're multitasking and we need a little bit of time to focus on what we're doing, we would just happily put her in the crate. And in the crate, she has those things to chew as well. So whenever she feels like playing, she has something to do that with. Now, in terms of nipping and biting, thankfully, that's something that we haven't really had to deal a lot with. And um, there's a specific reason why. From the get-go, we have been very strict about whether she's allowed to put her mouth on our clothes or on her skin, and that's always been a major no-no. That was something that we Im implemented with the rules right from the beginning. But, you know, because we've done so much training and control, we manage her well, she really views us as strong leaders. And because she understands where the relationship lies, she's just not that 
uh, interested in using her mouth. Now, has she tried it in the past? Yep, she's tried to choose. Oh, did you like that sound? She's liked to chew, um, you know, on my on my shirt sleeve or my fuzzy boots. And uh, again, redirection using the line and uh, stopping her from doing that has been really helpful. But utilizing her training, utilizing a response to name, leave it, sit, you know, really controlling her and teaching her what to do rather than having to correct her for things that she shouldn't be doing. Now, if you're one month in with your puppy and you're still dealing with a lot of nipping and biting, I have a couple videos on the channel that I think would really help and we'll post those in the description below. The other thing I'm gonna post is a link to our Puppy Essentials online program and that's gonna give you an opportunity to work with our trainers so we can help you specifically with some of the areas that you're struggling with your puppy at home. Now that we have the first month covered, if you're looking for a puppy training schedule specific to your dog's age, click that card right there. On that note, I'm Kale. This is Euchre. Happy training.